Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how you can alter the Deathskeeto experience for everybody on your server without them having to have any mods installed. For most Valheim players, this noise strikes fear into their hearts. If you don't have strong feelings about these Deathskeeto, I kinda wonder if you've even been to the plains. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you need to remove these. But what I'm gonna show you is that you have options. Anything in this game world that you think is too extreme, you can adjust. And I'll show you how now. As usual, we'll be doing this with Expand World Prefabs, only installed on the server. And if you wanna learn more about Expand World Prefabs, then check out my beginner's introduction which covers the basics of how it works and where to edit the file. As usual, this is all made possible thanks to Yere. So if you're able to and willing, then please go to the link in the description to go to their page to support them. You can make a one-time donation or contribute monthly, whatever you're more comfortable with. The easiest way to think of this mod is that you can use it to patch the Valheim server, and that'll change the experience for everybody who joins the server. It's incredible. To begin, we'll start with something tame. Every time a Deathskeeto loads, it's gonna get switched to a goblin instead of a Deathskeeto. This way, there's still some monsters, but we don't have to deal with the Deathskeeto. This is an incredibly simple script, so we're only going to need to edit the expand prefab section, and the amount of text you add is as little as this. This is a pre-existing script on the server that anytime the Deathskeeto spawns for the first time, some effects will be created, a lightning bolt, and, and the Deathskeeto itself will actually be removed. But this will only happen one third of the time. But that's not what I told you we're gonna make. We're gonna make it so that as soon as the Deathskeeto spawns, it always gets turned into a goblin getting rid of Deathskeeto entirely. So to begin, you'll always go dash prefab, and then the name of the prefab that you want to either remove or use as a trigger to spawn something. In this case, we're using the Deathskeeto prefab because we want to alter the Deathskeeto. After that, you line the cursor up with the P in the prefab, and you say the type, and in this case, it's a create. And then we need to add the line spawns, and then just another dash, aligned to the S this time, and now we want to spawn the goblin. But what if I don't know the prefab for the goblin? Well, that's when you go back into the game, open up the console, enable it if you haven't, and you look around. We're going to do spawn goblin, is that right? Oh, yes, it is goblin, which is funny because they're actually called fueling, but the prefab itself, as you saw, is goblin. So that means that we just have to go like this, goblin, and then we can go down one more and enter a remove true. This is going to make it so the original prefab gets removed. It has nothing to do with the goblin. All right, so the game sees, okay, a Deathskeeto gets loaded for the first time. It spawns into the world. The server will then react by creating a goblin and then removing the original prefab, which is the Deathskeeto. So let's get rid of this old one, because otherwise that's gonna mess it up. And then let's save the file. Ah, and I see I actually made a mistake, because this part here is supposed to be capital. Otherwise, it won't work. Case sensitivity is really important in Expand World Prefabs. And so now I've updated our script. It's been applied to the server. But you can see that those Deathskeeter were still there. That's because they were already spawned. These changes will only apply the first time the prefab spawns onto the server. After that, it's there. So all existing Deathskeeto will remain. However, if I open up the console and I spawn a Deathskeeto, look at that, it turns into a goblin. Let's spawn three Deathskeetos. Boom, three goblins. You see what's going on here? And all that takes is this very simple script. If you use this before any player has entered the planes, it will be impossible for the server to have any Deathskeeto because every time they spawn for the first time, they get replaced with a goblin. So alternatively, you could just remove this spawns part, right? Let's see what happens if we save this and use the script this way. Here we are in the world after the script was updated. And I'll spawn three Deathskeeto again. And then look, they just vanished. Where'd they go? They're all gone. So if you really wanted to, you could use these three lines 
to completely get rid of the Death Skeeter experience on your Valheim server for anybody who plays. Now, I personally don't recommend this because Death Skeeter serve their part, but maybe you want to make it so half the time they get removed, and the other half of the time they're normal. Because that way, the Death Skeeter threat is still there, but it's just not as harsh, because there's not as many of them. And we can easily do this by adding one line of text. It's weight and then the percentage. If we do 0.5, that means half of the time, the Death Skeeto will be removed. So let's save it. Now our save has been applied. So we're gonna spawn, instead of three Death Skeeto, let's try and spawn 10 of them. And boom, look at that. Seven of them disappeared and we have three remaining. Let's do it again. This time we have five that survived. So half of them disappeared. This time, we have most of them. So you can see that it is RNG. Technically it's possible. Oh God. Sorry, this site is just so terrifying. I know that I'm not in danger, but my instincts are killing me right now. And so you can see that half of the time the Death Skeeto spawns, it is removed. And this weight allows us to get much more playful with the options. Let's clear this scene a little bit. It's giving me way too much trauma. All right, much better. And now that you see how to use the weights, you can actually have multiple operations. For example, let's say half the time, I want the Death Skeeto to get removed. And the other half of the time, I want the Death Skeeto to be turned into a goblin. We can copy both of these scripts here. And then all we're gonna do is add back the goblin part to one of them, which is spawns and then capital goblin. There we go. Now we'll save it, and we're back in the game world. We're gonna run the same command that spawns 10 Death Skeeto, and you can see that it got turned into four Goblin. That means that six of them got removed, and four triggered the Goblin switch. But to be honest, this isn't really that balanced, because Death Skeeto do actually serve a purpose, and they're an important part of the planes. So I don't recommend that you remove them entirely. With that in mind, I'll now show you how I manage them on the Path of Magic server, which is currently in development as an EWP demo server to really show people what's possible with this fantastic mod. I don't want Death Skeetos to be removed entirely. I do want the threat to stay there, but I would like it to be reduced. But also, I like reminding people that this server isn't what they're used to. So we need to have a visual cue so they know what's going on. Because otherwise, they're just never going to see the Death Skeeto because it's going to spawn on the edge near the player and then instantly get removed. So maybe they'll see it show up for just a second before it vanishes. But that's not really clear. So what we've done here is set it up so the Death Skeeto will create a lightning strike and it'll remove the Death Skeeto there. The lightning strike doesn't actually hurt the death skeeto, it's purely cosmetic. But we have to be careful because this lightning AoE actually does damage. We can spawn it here and we see that the character actually gets hurt. And so do the goblins, right? So we, sh we should probably turn that off because otherwise <laughs> the death skeeto is gonna get struck by lightning and it's going to hurt whatever was near the death skeeto and that could cause some weirdness, especially on a server where players can summon Death Skeeto. So all we have to do to fix that is add these parameters here. The first three zeros are the coordinates. These here are just placeholders, you can ignore them. And then this visual effects is a data, and it's a very simple data here. It's just a placeholder. You can use this for a wide variety of different things. I use a placeholder called visual effects whenever I wanna make sure that the effect doesn't damage any props, which is like buildings or rocks, or any characters, which is players and enemies. So if both of these values are set to zero, then whatever this data is applied to won't do any damage. It'll be purely cosmetic. So here we have our Death Skeeter prefab creating a cosmetic lightning spawn to show that something happened over there and removing the Death Skeeto 40% of the time. But as I mentioned earlier, on this server, you can summon Death Skeeto using trophies. So what happens if you summon a Death Skeeto right on top of your character? Well, he's just going to vanish sometimes, and then that lightning bolt will show up, which is gonna kind of ruin the point of summoning a Death Skeeto, right? And so that's where we're going to add the following. 
band objects limit one, band objects, and then here, instead of fire pit, this is gonna be player. And then this five is the number of meters away. We're gonna make it 10. That way, if a player is within 10 meters of the death Skeeto when it loads for the first time, none of this will happen. And that's important because on the server, you can summon a death Skeeto. And we don't have to worry about this stopping death Skeeto from spawning because the death Skeeto spawn around the player, but much further away than just 10 meters. And there we have it. You now have the basics of how to use the mod expand world prefabs to patch your server, to alter the experience for everybody who plays on that server. To review, you know how to call a certain prefab and use it as a trigger to create a spawn of something every time that prefab gets loaded for the first time. You know how to adjust the coordinates compared to the first prefab using these numbers here. And you know how to set up a data that makes it so that the effect doesn't do any damage if it has a damaging component. Additionally, you know how to use the remove true tag, which will eliminate the original prefab that triggered the spawn, and you know how to use weights to adjust the percentage chance of this happening. And finally, we have the band objects limit, which stops the condition from happening even when it gets triggered if a player is within 10 meters. And there's actually also objects limits, which is the inverse of this. So it would only trigger if a player was nearby. There's a whole world that you can get into with Expand World Prefab. And I'm happy to keep these tutorials churning out. So if you have any ideas on what you would like to see a tutorial about with this mod, then let me know and I'll be happy to make you one if it's within my abilities. And if not, consider supporting my work by renting your own dedicated Valheim server using my link, JP Valheim, at Zap Hosting. And that's it for this video, everybody. Give this video a like if you want to see more Valheim content on your YouTube or any other video about Valheim, and YouTube will start churning out the content. Until then, I'll see you next time.